Hope you are having a lovely day. Kitty here with a Tola Visuals. And today I am so excited because I get to share with you my favorite Fujifilm custom profile. And using this setting, I love it so much because it brings out such unique colors and vibes, which makes filming such a fun and creative experience. I'm gonna show you test shots from my Yosemite camping trip that happened like 10 years ago, but now I'm getting this video today. Better late than never. And then later on, I'm gonna talk to you about my experience using it, as well as show you how you can achieve this look yourself. So let's get into the visual eye candy first. Enjoy. Did you see how good it looks? This is why it is one of my favorite colors. It is a custom profile called Nostalgic Negative. Fujifilm stated that the Nostalgic Negative film simulation is based on American New Color, photography of the 70s. They studied four photographers and while they had different styles, different darkroom processes, they each had a unique look. The commonality that Fujifilm found was that an overall atmosphere based on ember. That's a basic explanation of what nostalgic negative is. So I found this custom profile in the Fuji X Weekly app. I downloaded it on my iPad. As you can see here, there's so many, so many different profiles that you can play with. It is just visual gold. Like this one's called a retro gold. It'll have all the settings as well as example photos here so you can see what it looks like. And if you're too lazy to download the app, I will put the screenshot of the settings right here. And this is mostly for the photography settings, but if you do want to use it in video mode, it doesn't have all the specific settings like they do in photo. I personally shot on my Fuji X-T4. I don't know if the newer cameras or if there's a newer update that changed that, but yeah, just letting you know, it's not going to be exactly as what the photo looks like, but it does get really, really close. I'm birding. My test experience when I was testing out some auto white balance as well as some manual settings, I did notice that you get totally different colors depending on what you use, obviously. So when I had daylight balance, I usually keep it between 4,800 and 5,200. I don't know exactly what I had, but I did find that it had a lot more brown tones, which is too monochromatic for my taste. I mostly kept it on auto white balance because I just found that it was more balanced and the color contrast was a bit more what I was looking for. But play around and test it out. It's like so cute. My favorite shots, I loved how Yosemite looked with these settings. The contrast was perfect. The greens were exactly what I wanted. And it had this like calming vibe that really fit my camping aesthetic really well. It also had this like dark and moody forest vibe too. And my favorite photo would probably have to be the rooftop tent through the trees. It's something I probably need to print because I have no artwork on these walls except for these like generic home good Hobby Lobby ones. I don't remember where I got them. I just loved how the fog gave it this like soft dreamy look, like a very NorCal vibe that I miss very much. Although I don't miss that chilly weather that comes with it. But photography, visual purposes, it looks so good. In SoCal, we just have this burning direct sunlight pretty much all day, which is why people wait for sunset to go shooting. But in NorCal, I feel like you can just shoot any hour of the day and it's always pretty. For a video, I really love the shot of B walking up this log. I was worried for him because it was slippery. I'm like, be careful. But the textures of the rocks and the foreground and just the lighting coming down and everything just surrounding him, it looked like we were inside this cave. And his white t-shirt that was contrasting with the background looked really nice. And also there was like this water dripping every once in a while. It was just like 
I don't know, gave this like cinematic vibe, which was perfect and it was just all natural. And we just randomly found this spot too. And after we're done filming, people were like taking advantage of it too. So I know it was a good location when people start copying your shot. Anyways, it was really perfect of a scene. I just really wish I had a slider to create that like perfectly smooth movement, but I just held it and didn't breathe and just went like this. But you know, I'm not gonna be hiking with all that. So let's be real. National parks just make me appreciate how beautiful the world is. I know, not super cheesy, but they're really nice places. You guys wanna eat in there after? Fujifilm just offers that unique experience, which is more focused on the filming aspect. So it allows you to get great colors in camera, and it's really good for those who don't really enjoy extensive editing processes. Like me, I do get lazy sometimes, but personally, I do shoot in both JPEG and RAW, you know, just in case, or if I don't want to use that color look later on, or if the colors, exposure, whatever is just totally crazy, I could start from scratch and have that as a backup. But most of the time, I just use the JPEGs and post them as is. So then you could focus more on shooting, which is personally my favorite part of the process. The ability to experiment with all these different custom film simulations and settings is what makes Fujifilm such a fun and enjoyable camera to work with. And why I keep coming back to it time and time again. If you try a nostalgic negative yourself, please send me your work because I would love to check out various examples from your perspective in different places of the world. And that is all I have for you today. Okay, have a good night and I will see you soon. Kitty here, I'm out, mm. done. Bye, bye camera two, bye camera one. We finally made this video. It's been sitting in my project folder for so long. I'm so happy. Feels good, feels good. Okay, bye. <laughs> dun, 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 dun.